This is Dr. Andrew Yen over at St. John's, and we wanted to review the management of a very challenging situation. These are patients often with post-traumatic arthritis who have had a prior tibial shaft fracture and have an existing intramedullary nail within the tibial shaft. Um, so we'll take a few moments and we'll just go over the literature and then we'll go over the current manage um, and the use of the MAKO robot to leverage technology to make this a more straightforward and predictable surgery. So looking at the literature on how this has been historically managed is very informative and revealing. So it's a difficult problem, partly because it's such a rare problem. This study comes out of the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, and it looked at 24,000 total knee replacements. And within those 24,000, they were able to find 24 cases of patients who had an intramedullary tibial nail who needed a knee replacement. So it's not very common. Um, and it turns out these patients did very well, but there were challenges surgically in relation to the nail and the knee replacement, and we'll go over some of them. Perhaps the most important aspect of the study is that it highlighted the rarity. Again, it was 24 cases out of 24,000 knees. So this is something that happens in one out of a thousand patients. But it's, it does happen with some frequency, especially in a city as big as Los Angeles. So it's important to know how to manage this. The authors came up with a framework to help guide the management. The first thing to do is to evaluate the patient for infection. Sometimes a history of shaft fracture is associated with rare, but possible. And so a workup is done. And then the nail is evaluated for position and to see how that position may conflict or not conflict with the positioning of a total knee replacement. If there is conflict, then there are four steps that could be taken. The nail could be removed in a prior operation, followed by a secondary surgery with total knee replacement, or the nail could be removed at the same time as a total knee replacement, or the nail could be altered or the tibial component could be altered in order to make it fit. Alternatively, if the nail does not get in the way or impinge with the total knee replacement, then a routine total knee replacement could be done. And we'll take you through some of our own examples of this. This is the case of a 68-year-old 68 68-year-old male with severe right knee pain. He had a tibial shaft fracture almost 30 years ago. And this is an old type rod. This nail isn't even made anymore and it's buried deep within the femur. Now, fortunately, his shaft fracture is healed, but he's gone on to develop severe arthritis with bone on bone in the medial compartment and lateral subluxation. And so once it's clear that he doesn't have an infection, then we go on to the planning. We get a three-dimensional we get a CT scan so we can make a three-dimensional model and start looking at this knee preoperatively to see how a total knee replacement implant will fit in relation to this nail. So we make a three-dimensional model, and so we have in this we have in this top area the femur and then the bottom area the tibia. But what we're focusing on is this image in the lower right-hand corner, and we can see the nail here. And then we're looking at relation to the tibial implant and the keel of the tibial implant in relation to the nail. And we can see with standard size implants, this keel will impinge against this nail and either knock us into a period of, man, of malposition or prevent us from seating it completely. So we know that we have to make a change. Now, it's also important to see, we see this nail is completely buried within the bone. And so it will be very difficult to find and extract. And so what we will do then is that we will plan to leave the nail in place, but then use a modified tibial implant shorter than a typical one that ends about here. So we know that we have this large margin of safety and we will be free of avoiding impingement onto the tibial nail. I'll show you what that looks like. And so in this particular instance, we were able to use strategy four where we leave the nail in place but then we modify the tibial component. In fact, this is a special low profile tibial implant made by Stryker that's shorter at the tibial base. The normal tibial base comes down to here, but this is shortened and you can see how it stays above the nail, but especially in this lateral plane, it's exactly as we had planned. We have this nice margin of safety so we can seat the tibia implant fully without it impinging at all on the bone. Okay, let's go through another example. 
This is another patient who has a history of a tibial shaft fracture has gone on to develop severe arthritis in the knee. But you can see this is a very different type of nail. It's got this large flute at the top instead of the screw threads. And you can see this one, instead of coming out to here, like the last nail, comes all the way right next to the joint surface. And this presents some concern for us because it seems that even with modified components, we'll still be running into this nail. But we need to prove that first. So we'll make a three-dimensional model after a CT and then we'll go through the different planning options. So we can see on these two frames, very importantly, that the implant will impinge on the intermedullary nail, just as we suspected. We can see over here, you can see the rod here, you can see the keel will hit the rod, the posterior aspect of the rod. And very importantly here, no matter how small a component or keel we pick, it's going to hit along the entire length. So we know we need to do something differently with this rod. And in this case, the rod will have to come out. And so it's best for us to know ahead of time because we'll need special equipment in order to do that. So these rods have locking screws that hold the rod in place and help maintain the reduction or the stabilization of the fracture. The robot can be used to help find the screws to remove. And then we use special instrumentation. This is called a slap hammer, which we attach to the nail and then we use to remove from the tibial shaft. Once this is out, then we can use our regular 3D modeling to proceed with a routine knee replacement. And we can see here the nail is now out and now we have a routine knee replacement. And it looks as if the patient never had a nail in place, but we can see, we can appreciate the old screws from the prior nail that was removed. And just the last example, it's very common to have shaft fractures in the tibia or in the femur, as this patient has. And here, instead of a rod in the tibia, we see a rod in the femur. Now, historically, this is very challenging because with conventional instrumentation, we would insert a rod retrograde into the canal to establish our alignment. But we can see how this rod would block our intramedullary rod. So we were then always obligated to do two surgeries. We'd have to come in remove the rod from the top of the hip, and then do a second surgery and come and do the knee replacement. Now with computer, we use anatomic landmarks of the hip, knee, and ankle, and we no longer have to insert an intermedullary rod. And so we can work around this rod, but we still have to make sure that our femoral component will not impinge onto this implant. So we'll go ahead and we'll make another 3D model. And we can see very nicely on this 3D image, this model was very nicely placed. This rod was very nicely placed. It was exactly in the center, here, here, and here. So in all three planes, we are not anywhere close to the femoral implant. So fortunately, we don't need to remove it to get our alignment, and we don't need to remove it to be able to fully seat our femoral implant. And we can see postoperatively exactly what we had planned preoperatively. In this image, we can see our femoral implant goes exactly where we had planned it preoperatively on the computer screen. It's completely away from the tibia, from the, I'm sorry, excuse me, from the femoral nail over here, which sits centrally. So very importantly, this is a more challenging operation. There are four different strategies. One is to remove the nail ahead of time. A second is to remove the nail at the same time. A third is to modify the nail, which means cutting the nail or modifying the tibial implant to work around it. Or fourth, putting in an implant if we know ahead of time that the implant will not impinge on the intramedullary hardware. Um, robotics has made this a much easier and more predictable procedure because alignment is set without having to remove the rod. And fortunately, we can plan ahead of time for any potential surprises. Thank you very much.